Good afternoon. We're here at Bellevue Hospital with Dr. Natalie Levy, who is in charge of the Diabetes Primary Care Program here. And today is World Diabetes Day, a day created to respond to the growing health threat posed by diabetes. There are over 1,200 events happening in countries around the world today to raise awareness about diabetes. And we're here to speak to Dr. Levy about the great work she's doing here at NYC Health and Hospitals uh, with uh, supporting the patients here and the MIGHTY program, which uses text messaging to help patients manage their diabetes. I wanna thank you for joining us today. And I wanted to start with uh, asking you a little bit about yourself, how long you've been here at Bellevue and how you got interested in caring uh, for diabetes. Sure, I just wanna start by saying thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today and it certainly is World Diabetes Day and I'm glad to be part of the conversation. So to answer your question, my name is Natalie Levy. I'm a primary care doctor here at Bellevue. I've been here for 14 years. Um, and I would say I'm interested in diabetes for two good reasons. The first is that I definitely find the science behind diabetes to be really interesting. Um, so I like that aspect of it. But I think the second reason why I'm interested in diabetes is I look at it as just being part of my job. When I started working here at Bellevue, it became very clear to me right away that I would be helping a lot of people from New York City uh, manage their diabetes. And like any good doctor, I think it's important that I made myself as knowledgeable as possible about diabetes um, and uh, you know, made sure that I was in the best position possible so I could help my patients live their healthiest life. And I just want to remind everyone that we're here with Dr. Natalie Levy speaking about diabetes. Uh, if you're watching, please tell us where you're watching from. Share, like this page, share with your friends who uh, might be interested in diabetes, friends you know who may have diabetes or, or who may want to prevent it from coming on. Um, so let's start with the basics. What, what is diabetes and why should we be concerned about it? Great question. So diabetes is essentially a problem with blood sugar levels. So all of us have sugar in our blood. That's definitely normal. We need the sugar in the blood. It provides energy to our organs, to our cells, all over our body. So sugar isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when people have diabetes, the level of the sugar in their blood is too high, um, higher than normal. And we should be concerned about that because when the blood sugar is really high, it actually can be damaging to um, our organs. So I'm sure many people watching know that um, some organs that can be affected after being exposed to really high blood sugar, for example, would be the eyes, right? People who have diabetes that's not well controlled for a long time can wind up having damage to their vision. And sometimes in extreme cases, it can lead to um, blindness. And similarly with, um, I think many people know that diabetes isn't so great for the kidneys having high blood sugars for a long time can lead to kidney damage and then in extreme cases can lead to the kidneys not working at all which is when dialysis has to start so um, we want to uh, make sure that our blood sugar levels are you know right where they should be and prevent uh, the organs in our body from being harmed by them and what's um incredible about diabetes is uh we've got about 700,000 new yorkers who have diabetes and from what the health department tells us, uh, about a third don't know they have it. Mm -hmm. So could you uh, tell us a little bit about the symptoms? What are the warning signs that uh, a person uh, who has diabetes, who doesn't know it, might be looking for and, and should be uh, asking their doctor about? What are the symptoms? Sure. So um, when diabetes, when the blood sugars uh, in someone who has diabetes are very high, there often are some pretty extreme symptoms. People can have a lot of thirst, constantly drinking, needing to go to the bathroom very frequently. People can feel tired, weak, fatigued. Uh, they can have blurry vision. And um, this usually is when the blood sugars are extremely high. But fortunately or unfortunately, when the blood sugars are just medium high, uh, oftentimes people have no symptoms of their diabetes. And this is why it's very, very important for all New Yorkers when they see their doctor to talk about whether or not they should be tested for diabetes. Um, we don't want to wait until the diabetes is so bad that the symptoms are terrible. We want to find people with their diabetes early on so that we can start treatments before things get out of hand. And once again, we're here with uh, Dr. Natalie Levy here at NYC Health and Hospitals Bellevue in Manhattan on World Diabetes Day, taking your questions about diabetes or if you'd like to 
Uh, share this Facebook Live with friends who might be on Facebook now who are concerned about diabetes or who might have loved ones who are struggling with diabetes and managing it. Please share, send in your questions. Uh, Dr. Levy's here to help you with uh, whatever questions you might have. Um, and now I'd like to switch to the work you're doing here at Bellevue um, to help patients who have diabetes. You have a, a number of great support groups. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how those help uh, diabetes patients manage their lives? Sure, so um, in the medical clinic here at Bellevue, which we call the Adult Primary Care Center, we have developed numerous programs, many programs to help people with diabetes. I think the one that you're probably referring to, I know a couple of weeks ago you had a chance to sit in with us um, on what we call our diabetic group visit. So, uh, a diabetic group visit, um, I run it along with two wonderful diabetes nurses, a terrific physician assistant, and a pharmacist. And I think those of us that put this class together understand that behavior change, right, getting people to change the way they live their life, usually takes two things. The knowledge of what's supposed to be done, and then the support and encouragement to actually get it done. So our class um, follows that principle. Um, we spend a lot of time in these diabetic group visits really educating our patients on all aspects of diabetes, uh, physical activity, why it's important, uh, proper things to be eating, um, the importance of taking medications, how to check their blood sugar if that's needed, how to inject insulin if that's needed. So we really provide a lot of knowledge. We can say it's from A to Z. We provide knowledge on all aspects of type 2 diabetes. But the second part of behavior change, I think, is really being supported and encouraged. And having diabetes for many people can be tough. And I think what our patients like about these diabetic group visits is the support element that you were referring to. So they get to come and share about the struggles that they have um, dealing with uh, diabetes. And I think they feel tremendous support to know that they're not alone, that there are other fellow New Yorkers, many other fellow New Yorkers who are in the same situation as them. So there's certainly a lot of sharing in our class, which is, is wonderful. I think it's one of the best parts. But another best part is that different patients will talk about how they have overcome these challenges, what tips they have for you know, getting, um, be, being physically active, right? We tell everyone, go for a walk, but what happens when it's cold outside in the winter? And we talk to people about eating healthy, but what happens when someone brings unhealthy food to your home? So they really share a lot of very practical um, ideas and solutions and tips that they've come up with. And the sharing of ideas, I think, makes people feel very supported. So we share the knowledge that everyone needs to know, um, and then we also provide this in, um, environment for support and encouragement um, between patients to really support one another. Uh, and it was, um, just for those of you joining in, we're here again with Dr. Natalie Levy uh, at NYC Health and Hospitals Bellevue, which has a very innovative, supportive program to care for people with diabetes. Uh, she was just talking about the support groups they have here, which uh, I did get a chance to visit a few weeks ago, and I can attest to the fact uh, there was so much love and care in that room. We had a, a, a big, uh, a large uh, man from Brooklyn who kind of confessed his weakness for sweet buns, which I thought was very cute. <laughs> um, but it was, it was really remarkable and really touching how just what you said, they were helping each other out. Um, you know, weaknesses, struggling, what's working for one, what's working for another. Um, so I really enjoyed that and I I'd encourage anyone who's having, uh, who has diabetes or knows someone with diabetes to go to our website, nychealthandhospitals.org slash diabetes uh, and reach out, find one of our programs. Uh, some support programs are in English. There is a very popular Haitian Creole one in Kings County. Um, but back to what's going on at Bellevue, there's also an innovative program known as MIGHTY, um, which uh, Dr. Levy, you were honored for. Congratulations on that. Uh, a text messaging program to help patients with diabetes. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So it's called the MIGHTY program, as you said. And uh, this is a program to help people who have type 2 diabetes find their correct insulin dose without having to come to clinic. So we made this program because we really saw how during that period of time when we were trying to adjust someone's insulin dose, people were having to come back to clinic very frequently. So if you or someone in your family or someone you know takes insulin, you may have seen that they inject themselves with insulin and then the next morning before they have anything to eat or drink, they check their blood sugar, right? They have to poke their finger and they use a machine to get a blood sugar reading. And a lot of times they write that down in a log or on a piece of paper that they bring 
um, to their doctor. And uh, usually what happens at every visit, uh, the dose of insulin gets increased until the sugar falls to um, as low as it needs to be. And patients were coming back over and over again in a very short time period. And our patients have trouble getting back to the hospital so quickly. We have patients that work and when they miss work, they don't get paid, they work, you know, risk angering their boss or they take care of kids that's hard to bring them to the hospital or they have challenges with um, navigating public transportation. So I think all of this was to say that we just saw that it was really difficult for patients and very challenging for them to come back so frequently to get their insulin adjusted. So we decided to make this program that we call MIGHTY. Uh, it stands for the Mobile Insulin Titration Intervention, and it's pretty simple. Um, if someone enrolls in the MIGHTY program, they get a text message every day, and it just asks them on the text message, what was your fasting blood sugar this morning? Very simple question. People have already checked their sugar. They type in the um, the number that cars, you know, the number that their sugar was, and they press send, and that's it. That message comes every day, every weekday, and then once a week, our wonderful mighty nurses call patients and advise them on how to adjust their insulin. So we took a process that was burdensome and um, you know took a lot of time and effort, and um, we brought it to people through their cell phone. And importantly, I will say, since we this was a homegrown program, we designed this program ourselves. Um, all of the only technology that it requires to be in the Mighty program for the patient is to have a cell phone that can text and accept phone calls. So you do not need to have a smartphone, there's no app involved, there's no Wi-Fi or data plan, there's just if you can you know, have a phone that can send and receive text messages and you can uh, pick up and talk to the nurse when he or she calls you on uh, once a week to give advice, that's all you need to participate in our program. Um, patients have done really well with the programs so far. Our patients have found a lot of success and we've helped a lot of people find their correct insulin dose. And I will just say that when we talk to our patients, they tell us how much they like it. Um, they certainly appreciate the convenience of not having to come back and forth to the hospital. Um, they say that they feel uh, like the text messages motivate them to do good things. So they'll tell us, like they know that the text message is coming the next morning, so they really think twice about what they eat at night because they feel like they're going to be accountable in the morning. They share that it reminds them to take their insulin and check their sugar. So they feel that it's convenient. They find that, that they're very motivated by the program. And people also say they, they look at it as a source of support. Getting that text message every day makes them feel like their doctors and team care about them. And when the nurse calls them every week, they really love that, um, that opportunity where the healthcare system comes to them through their cell phone and makes them feel very supported. That's great. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're here, if you're just joining in, with Dr. Natalie Levy, NYC Health and Hospitals Bellevue. She was just uh, explaining a very innovative program in use here to help diabetes patients manage their diabetes through text messaging, um, which is fantastic. I mean, the fact that they feel so uh, nurtured and cared for by getting that message every day is really um, great to hear, and congratulations on the good work on Thank that you. program. It's a team effort, and you've done a good job. Thank you. Um, so uh, just uh, wrapping up, I I'd like to just close out with two final questions. Um, we've talked a little bit about managing diabetes, and I also want to talk about preventing it. Uh, if So first of all, managing diabetes, if, if you're, if someone out there is listening, it's the, the people who are out there who are managing, living with diabetes, or, or have a loved one who's managing diabetes, what are the top three tips you would give a, a diabetes patient? Sure. Uh, who... I'll try to look into the camera for this right. one. <laughs> so um, I always tell my patients that have diabetes that there's three very important areas that have to be addressed when you have diabetes. So the first would be being as physically active as possible, the second is eating right, and the third is taking your medication. So all of us, whether we have diabetes or not, need to be as physically active as possible. I think that's true for everyone, but particularly when you have diabetes, it's super important to exercise. So for some people, physical activity is that they go to a gym or they have access to a pool or they have some type of exercise equipment in their apartment, which would be great. Um, for some people, being physically active is taking the stairs instead of taking the elevator or getting off the bus or subway one or two stops ahead of time and then getting a 20 or 30 minute walk in um, on the way home. Um, for some people, get, being physically active is finding a friend or family member or other loved one to be in it with you and go to the park and walk for 20 or 30 minutes. 
um, on as many days as possible. So whatever, whatever you can do to be as physically active as possible is very important, it makes a, a, a big difference. It brings down your blood sugar, it makes you healthier. And then of course, um, eating is so important. You know, I'm sure many people's mothers told them, you are what you eat, and uh, generally that's correct. So um, there's foods that people with diabetes should not be eating. And I think almost more importantly, there's foods um, that people with diabetes should be eating. So we want to cut out the unhealthy foods, and then we want to really increase the healthy foods that our patients with diabetes are eating. Do you so, have any uh, top uh, three or four don't foods? Yeah. Definitely avoid uh, diabetes patients should avoid? Sure. I think a really easy target is um, sugary drinks. So all those sugary sweetened beverages, whether it's soda or juice, or some of the sports drinks, um, you know, those those are they may be delicious, but they're not good for you. And um, when you have diabetes, and really all of us shouldn't be drinking um, sugar sweetened beverages. So that's that's important. Um, foods made with white flour, those foods are not your friends. So um, bread, um, all kinds of bread, bagels, regular bread, Italian bread, rolls, the, the rolls and the butter roll, um, and you know the white flour that's in all the processed foods really not good for you. And I would say, you know, white rice is also, unfortunately on the list, you know, white rice is delicious, it's easy and it's cheap, but it's really not good for health. So the list is a lot longer, but I generally find that those three areas, sugary drinks, foods made with white flour, usually the pro really processed foods, um, and then white rice are usually and, on my list. And what are the uh, go-to foods, the foods uh, diabetes patients should right. eat more of? Uh, any three or four you can sure right everyone knows that we should eat our vegetables so that always tops my list um, I think it's super important that patients with diabetes eat a lot of vegetables and in a lot of creative ways so that you know it, it, it doesn't have to be just raw vegetables they can be sauteed on the stovetop roasted in the oven or it could be in part of a salad sneaking lettuce and tomato onto a sandwich but trying to get vegetables I tell my patients they should have fruit with every breakfast and that they should have vegetables with lunch and dinner I had a patient who um, told me that she was having tuna fish on whole wheat for lunch and she wanted to know was that unhealthy and I said there's really nothing unhealthy there but where's the healthy part mm -hmm. you know put lettuce and tomato on the sandwich cut up a, a cucumber on the side put some carrots put some tomatoes but really trying to get vegetables with um, you know with lunch and dinner I think is um, it's a mission that everyone should be on great uh, and again we're here with uh, Dr. Natalie Levy NYC Health and Hospitals Bellevue I want to thank you for your time today. Sure. Um, I, I'd like to leave it open to you if there's anything you'd like to uh, tell our Facebook fans out there about sure. diabetes before uh, you leave us for today. Um, I would talk, I guess I would, I would leave everyone with the thought of it's important to be, to talk to your doctor about whether or not you should be tested for diabetes. Not everyone needs a test for diabetes, but many people do. And the next time you're at your doctor, or if you haven't been in a while and you make an appointment with your primary care physician, it's a good idea to talk about whether or not you should be tested for diabetes. Like I said previously, when the diabetes is really bad, when the sugars are super high, there can be terrible symptoms that everyone's going to notice, right? Everyone will, will know that you're sick. But when diabetes is kind of creeping along in those mild to medium stages, you may not have any symptoms. And really the only way that you're going to know about it is if um, you get uh, talk to your doctor and get a simple blood test um, for diabetes. So I think I would encourage everyone to get tested. Diabetes is really scary when it's out of control, but we have so much that we can do. We know so much about um, type of diabetes. I work with type 2 diabetes. So really, um, if you find out that you have prediabetes or diabetes, there's so much that can be done to control it and you can live a very healthy, normal life. But um, we don't know that we have work to do unless we know whether or not you have diabetes. So I think it's important for everyone to get tested. Great. Well, thank you again for your time. And for those of you who have tuned in, thanks so much. Uh, remember to like our page and go to our website, nychealthandhospitals.org slash diabetes to find care in your neighborhood. We have uh, dozens of supportive programs in every neighborhood uh, across the city in every language. Um, so please uh, go to us for support, call us. Uh, Dr. Levy is just one of our fantastic doctors, but we have uh, tons uh, across New York City. So again, happy Diabetes Day. It is not uh, a scary thing if you know how to manage it and if you are knowledgeable about, about it. So thank you, Dr. Thank Levy. Thank you, I appreciate it.